has a clip from the new movie Lone Survivor, which tells the true story of four Navy SEALs on a covert mission in Afghanistan back in 2005, and what happens when they are ambushed by the Taliban. The film just had a big weekend. In fact, one theater in Texas ended up canceling several other hit films, Wolf of Wall Street and others, to accommodate the huge audience that wanted to see Lone Survivor. But now we're seeing some media reports starting to criticize the film as pro-war propaganda and questioning the mission of the SEALs. That is not sitting well with Sergeant Dakota Meyer. He's a Marine Corps veteran who received the Medal of Honor for his heroic acts during a 2009 firefight in Afghanistan, uh, one of only three living recipients of that incredible honor. It's great to see you, Sergeant. Thank you so much for being here. Your reaction to some of the pushback we've seen from some uh, that this is that this film is propaganda meant to uh, lift up the military. Well, Megan, you know, I, I tell you that whatever I keep hearing propaganda, I guess you can call it whatever you want to, but understand that that propaganda, that what, whatever they're calling propaganda, is the reality. For 0.4% of the nation that's gone over there for the last 12 years fighting these wars so that we can be free and independent freedom. So that propaganda is, is our reality. So you can call it whatever you want, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's not propaganda. I mean, these are the stories of the men and women who are sacrificing, and they've got to come back and tell the story so other people know. I think what Marcus did in, in writing his book and going out and... Marcus and, and, You know, what Marcus did, I think what he's done is, I think, you know, it's, it's great. I mean, he's got to tell the story so people realize it. He gave an interview to uh, an anchor on CNN. They had a contentious exchange. I'll play you part of it that's getting some headlines. I don't mean to disrespect in any way, but it seems senseless, all these wonderful people who were killed for, for an op that went wrong. We spent our whole lives training to defend this country, and then we were sent over there by this country, so you're telling me that because we were over there doing what we were told by our country that it was senseless and might die, what, they died for nothing? No, I'm not saying that at all. That's what you said. So let me just say that, that yeah, it went bad for us over there, but that was our job. That's what we did. Your reaction to that, Sergeant? You know, it's not senseless. You know, the, the, the problem is, is, is people don't understand what the mission was going over there. It's not like it was back in World War I and World War II where it was a country against a country and then, you know, somebody had to give and that's how you decide a win of a war. We went over there and our mission was to stabilize that country, to, to put them in a position to where they had an opportunity to go and, and secure the country and make a difference. We did that. We, we, we helped them form their government. We helped provide security. The men and women are still over there sacrificing. I just got back from Afghanistan over Christmas, and, and I'm telling you, the sacrifices aren't for nothing. And I told those Marines that over there, they'll come back and let people tell you that, that it was for nothing, because it was. And, you know, I think in Jake Tapner's defense, he was trying to give voice to how some people in the country look at that war and then give uh, Marcus Luttrell the chance to respond to that, and, and it started a dialogue on, on that subject. Um, another another thing that is being discussed right now, Sergeant, is what Bob Gates said about how the president feels about these wars, about how Iraq is the so-called bad war uh, and Afghanistan is the so-called good war. And, and Mr. Gates, his, his interpretation of the president is not ever being fully behind the mission in Afghanistan and actually believing, uh, perhaps being convinced that it may fail. Here he is over the weekend speaking to his book. We know it's yeah. one thing to tell the troops that you support them. It's another to, to work at making them believe that you believe as president that their sacrifice is worth it, that the cause is just. President Bush did that with the troops uh, when I was secretary. I did not see President Obama do that. Your thoughts on that? So, they, uh, so my question is, is why is he just now saying this? You know, he was in a position to make a difference, to make a stance, and to say something. But well, I mean, well, why, Megan? Why does he? Why does he wait till now to say it when he's not in a position to do it? Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he was supposed to represent us and take, you know, take care of us. Why, you know, why didn't he do it then? If he didn't believe that that the power above us was doing what was right, then why didn't he step down? I can't let you go without asking you about the Al Qaeda flags flying over Fallujah in Iraq. Uh, you know, it, it infuriates me, but, but let's, let's, let's say this, you know, the Iraq war, don't give up on Iraq yet. You know, I mean, I, I, I see that this is a test for them, but let's don't give up on them yet. Let's wait and see what happens. Don't count them out yet. You know, I, I think that what's happening is, is we're reporting on this thing so we can say, hi, I told you so, 
but I, I don't think we're there yet. I think let's sit back and watch it. Iraq might surprise you. Dakota Meyer, it's an honor to speak with you. The third living recipient of the Medal of Honor since the Vietnam War, deployed twice, Iraq, Afghanistan. Uh, we appreciate your service to this nation, sir. Thank you so much. All the best to you.